A lot of acres have been planted across Oklahoma and a lot of the wheat is coming up. Jeff, where are we with the wheat crop right now? We're about half planted, a little more than half planted in Oklahoma. Uh, we, we were fortunate back early in the year and got some rain and were able to plant a lot of those dual purpose acres. Now about everything that's going in uh, is primarily grain only acres and we're entering our prime planting window for those grain only acres. This is really the optimal time to plant wheat for grain production in Oklahoma. The moisture that we've been getting is that timely moisture that we've heard about so often. Well, it depends on where you are. It's been real spotty. Mm -hmm. uh, the southwest has gotten a little more moisture. Things are still pretty dry in northwestern Oklahoma. Uh, we, we need a good rain. We need a good rain kind of across the wheat belt of the state to, to help us out. There's a lot of uh, wheat acres that have been dusted in in northwest Oklahoma over the past couple of weeks and we're going to need a, a good rain to get those acres out of the ground. Some of that wheat that was planted back early for wheat pasture that just, uh, just started to emerge or maybe has a few leaves on it, a lot of that's just kind of sitting there waiting on some moisture. It's still okay but if we want to have wheat pasture, we're going to need a rain pretty quickly to give that, uh, that wheat a shot in the arm and get it to come on and make some wheat pasture. Some of the wheat that did come out of the ground had, a, had an armyworm problem in there. So we did have a lot of armyworms uh, back earlier in the year. They caused some injury to some of that early emerging wheat. Uh, really what producers need to do on that armyworm injured wheat is take a look at it, give it a few days and see if we have green uh, growth, new growth coming out of those plants. Given the preference, if those plants are green and coming back to life, I would rather have those plants as opposed to a replant. If the injury was significant enough that those plants aren't coming back or maybe areas of the field the plants aren't coming back well we might have to do a replant situation and we still have a nice window to do that for grain production kind of out of that forage window though it's also important for our producers to remain vigilant over the coming month or so in terms of scouting for army worms because they can be an issue until we have that first killing freeze and speaking of scouting, producers also need to be in the field right now watching for weeds because we've actually, again, had the moisture, which is something we may not have had in previous years. Right. If you've had moisture, then you may have gotten that first flush of weeds. Uh, it doesn't matter what the crop is, right. whether it's corn, soybean, wheat, canola, whatever. Uh, the research has shown time and time again that killing those weeds when they're small is the most effective strategy in terms of preserving yield. And also, it's a lot easier to kill small small weeds. Uh, that's especially true with many of our grassy weeds, things like Italian ryegrass. If you let it make it through the winter, especially if you're grazing, it's, uh, it's tillered out, it's been grazed by those cattle, it's toughened up during the winter, and it's just much more difficult to kill in the spring. Uh, so keep an eye out there, know what weeds you have, and if you get an opportunity this fall, and generally we do in Oklahoma, to make some weed control applications, that's the time to do it. Uh, that you'll have have a lot better weed control and also it will improve your grain yield. Are, do, do you have advice for no-till producers versus conventional till? Well, our, our no-till producers just kind of need to keep an eye on things. I, I guess uh, in particular, in terms of weed control, they really need to be, be on top of that. Uh, one of the major reasons in Oklahoma that people have tried no-till and then switched back to conventional till is they were having trouble controlling weeds. Right. And uh, if we can take that out of the equation, it will make that conversion to no-till or long-time maintenance and staying in no-till, it will make it much easier if we keep those weed problems and check fall application of herbicides is one way to do that. Now when it comes to soil nutrition, producers may or may not be seeing that enriched strip right now. Uh, they, it may not be showing up right. and uh, that's actually a good thing. It means you don't need any nitrogen right now. If that enriched strip is already sticking out like a sore thumb, still not a major concern right. for me because wheat really, unless you're grazing, doesn't need much nitrogen through the winter. But it is kind of an indication that you need to be prepared with top dress, maybe top dress those fields a little earlier mm -hmm. uh, than the fields where the nitrogen rich strip is not showing up as well. Uh, but the only way you're going to know that, of course, is if you have that nitrogen rich strip out there, plenty of time to still get those in and uh, be able to utilize that tool. In a year where we have lower wheat price coming off a pretty marginal year in terms of yield, it's important to make the most use of every dollar and 
nitrogen rich strips are a great way to do that. Okay, thank you much. Jeff Edwards, small grain specialist here at Oklahoma State University.